Hello everyone and welcome back to X-Plane 11 where I wanted to show you a shuttle approach and landing at Edwards Air Force Base. What I really wanted to do was to do it as it was done with the shuttle Enterprise and release it off of the back of a 747 and then glide in. But unfortunately, uh, you can't switch vessels in mid-flight in X-Plane. So, as since the space shuttle doesn't have the little menu that says make it carry by a 747, it, it's just lacking that option, uh, we can only fly the 747 and have it carry the shuttle and then release the shuttle and not be able to switch to it. So the shuttle would fly off and we can't do anything about it. So the only option is pre-configured flights and fortunately x comes with those. So you can see their final approach, full approach, final re-entry and full re-entry. On this one I'm going to do full approach and then work my way from there. Final approach would be easy. Uh, so we're going to do this full approach at Edwards Air Force Base and see how that works out. I've already done it before during a live stream but that video quality wasn't uh, quite good enough for YouTube. It was successful and basically my landing here was identical to what I did there. Now as a little how-to for this flight, it says that it starts you off 40 miles downrange at 83,000 feet, Mach 2.5, and it tells you about the moving map, and it tells you to fly over and past Edwards at 60,000 feet, and then do a left 230 degree turn to bring it back to Edwards for landing at 22. I haven't found those tips to be particularly accurate because, assuming you're descending at any sort of decent rate, um, if you try and turn at 60,000 feet, you're going to miss Edwards Air Force Base. The turn will just be too soon. Uh, the 230 degrees is correct and runway 22 is fine and actually 300 knots is a good indicated airspeed to aim for. That's a good number. It's just the uh, 60,000 feet that was somewhat dubious. If there's any stickiness in the video, that's uh, probably because of the video recording and not my actual flight. There wasn't this kind of lag. I don't know why the recording has the lag in there. So as you can see, I continue right past Edwards Air Force Base and continue below 60,000 feet and uh, do not turn that quickly. Now, maybe there is a flight path to take that uh, turning at 60, no, actually there isn't, I can't imagine a flight path where turning at 60,000 feet would have been a good idea. So um, just, um, yep, uh, go by the circles. The circles are not too bad as a way of judging things. Around here is a good time to start contemplating the turn. It takes a while for the shell to turn, as you might imagine. And once it completes its turn, you're going to go to a down 20 degree pitch, as the shuttle does. And the expectation is to keep around 300 knots indicated airspeed. So here you can see I'm starting my turn. And we have to turn right around. I can't say for sure whether this is the correct approach for the shuttle at Edwards Air Force Base. I suppose uh, viewers can inform me about that. I can just tell you that this is uh, what they gave me in x as far as, you know, the 83,000 feet or so that they let me off and the distance from Edwards Air Force Base that we were set up at. And the velocity, of course, very important. So I'm going to assume that those are the correct uh, numbers for an approach to Edwards. And after that, you know, everything is basically set in stone for what you have to do. So here I am completing the turn and we'll be lined up with one of the fully paved runways at Edwards Air Force Base as opposed to the many dirt runways for experimental craft. The clouds are, as you can see, a bit of a nuisance but we will eventually go below the altitude and the view will be quite clear. Of course, the shuttle would not uh, land in particularly bad weather. Uh, it would just uh, continue in orbit until the weather reports indicated that the landing zone was clear. This I don't think is particularly problematic. I don't know what the rules are for the shuttle and whether they really needed clear skies. Not hard to get clear skies in Southern California, of course. Uh, I kept my nose a little bit higher than necessary, uh, just out of an abundance of caution because of the clouds and engaging with the map. I don't know how cheaty using the map is like that. 
Um, hopefully not too cheaty. But anyway, here I'm going to break below the clouds and we will see the runway for the first time. Okay, and then you'll see I'll very quickly go to uh, down 20 degree pitch. Okay, there you go. There's the runway and you can see the severe descent path we're talking about when we say down 20 degrees. And uh, you can see the dirt runways to the right there. The huge landing strips that are available for experimental aircraft and the shuttle. But we're gonna land on one of the proper asphalt runways this time. Though there's a bit of a dirt lead-in. You can see that our velocity is way above the 300 knot indicated airspeed that we were going for. So I start to deploy the air brakes and here the external view. You can see how the shuttle attitude is and the air brakes are extended. And that'll help us slow down a bit. Obviously I'm not pointing directly at the runway here. I'm pointing ahead of it uh, right with that uh, very convenient dirt strip to give us a good guide for where we ought to be and that gives us time for the flare maneuver and proper touchdown but there will be a complication here because I do want to go to the exterior view to see that the landing gear is deployed and, you know always good to make sure that's more of a Kerbal thing uh, because in times past landing gear didn't always deploy properly and we always had to check uh, but because of that my view gets messed up and you'll see what happens that leads us to uh, a suboptimal touchdown so here you go I mean, <laughs> quite daunting to be pointed at the thing at this angle but you'll see that it is the right thing to do at this point we will start flattening out soon. There we go. And there's the landing gear and I go out to see the landing gear and my view is a little bit off so I try to adjust it but the mouse slips to the side and I have to quickly adjust myself and that throws me off a little bit. So, yeah, and then I end up catching a little bit too much lift as opposed to landing where I really wanted to. 30, 20, 10. Okay. And a bit of a bounce. Not entirely sure it is a bounce. Uh, the thing is, yeah, you can see the nose up of the shuttle. And it, when you deploy the parachute, the drogue chute, um, it does really want to pull the nose up again. You really have to force that thing down. And that's not only in X-Plane. That's true in, in Kerbal's space program as well when you're landing a shuttle. If you've got the parachute in the back, it really wants to pull that nose back up. I've noticed that. Uh, the brakes in this game. I, I wish they had a brake indicator too. But anyway, there we go. The shuttle has landed and it could do with some refinements. I'll need more practice obviously. But I do want to try out the full re-entry and in another video we'll see how that goes. That should be more challenging and that may, might involve a little bit more derpiness. Uh, perhaps some explosion, well not really explosions, in next plane it tends to just be sort of a flop. So yeah. Uh, look out for that and with that I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time.